we're being joined by Tomasz Rubowski, former Polish ambassador to France and Italy. Delighted to have you, sir. Good afternoon. So, Weimar if, Triangle, right? If, right, exactly. The Weimar Triangle, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but uh, let's start now very broadly, as many are talking about that uh, now we see the revival of the Weimar Triangle. Uh, what is your take on this? For me, still, uh, Weimar uh, Triangle was the most brilliant idea after the collapse of the communists concerning our cooperation with the main Western European countries, our allies and partners, partners inside the European Union. To have this privileged possibility to talk directly to French politicians and to German ones, it is something who is, who is uh, allowing us to present our sensitivity who is different uh, um, when we're conf when I'm, uh, when I'm thinking about all questions concerning especially Russia, Russia influence in Eastern Europe and Russia threat. We are all now uh, considering vital and, and finally I would say something who is uh, representing a threat for all of us, not only for Eastern flank, but for Europe as a whole. Uh, so you're, um, you're a former ambassador to France, so let mm -hmm. me ask uh, you about Macron and his uh, uh, policies. He said that, um, you know, uh, putting European boots on the ground in Ukraine is not unthinkable. Uh, this has been opposed by Olaf Scholz. So, I mean, how can we evaluate French policies towards Ukraine? What can we expect? How, how has it changed? Because I think his, uh, his stance has changed, right? Uh, towards Russia, first he was... We don't have any doubt. First, we think, uh, and I am thinking myself, that it is very deep changement in the, in the French vision of Russia, a threat for European security. You know, a couple of years ago, in France, it was considered that Ukraine, it is not a real state, that Ukrainians are not a real nation. And since the uh, Russian aggression against uh, Ukraine, they finally understood how strong is uh, Ukrainian identity, how strong is uh, Ukrainian resistance. On the other hand, seeing that Russia is openly entering and interfering in the, in the home affairs of countries like France. It is a risk not only for the, for the countries like, neighboring countries like Poland, but it is the risk for, for countries like France. In the vision of the, of the next uh, uh, elections to the European Parliament, Mm, uh, Stéphane Sejourné spoken about this uh, yesterday, how we have to be extremely careful about role Russia is playing in the next uh, European elections. All right, and now, before we continue, let's have a look at that material that we mentioned in the beginning. Closer cooperation between the three nations was the main message of the Weimar Triangle Summit on Wednesday. The foreign ministers made it clear that Poland, France and Germany are entering a new era of relations. We can no longer afford a foreign policy on autopilot. This is why we, as the Weimar Triangle, want to be the driving force behind ensuring that we, as the European Union, position ourselves correctly and become more capable of acting geopolitically. 33 years ago it seemed that the ghosts of the previous century had been vanquished and that we as Europeans had learned to live in peace and respect the borders of our neighbors. It has turned out that not everyone has learned this after all. That is why it is so important that we have met here in this circle of countries representing 40% of the entire European Union that now represents one third of the political power of the European Union. The one third mentioned by the Polish minister is the percentage of seats in the EU parliament held by the three countries since this June's European elections. But it's important to note that the sheer number of seats does not correspond to direct political influence. The seats will be distributed between individual parties in the EU Parliament and they can have vastly different political views. Still, 
the representation of 40% of the EU population is bound to have an impact on the European community, especially with closer cooperation between the three governments. Among the very specific projects that we have initiated, we have already made a great deal of progress, for example, in the fight against information manipulation and foreign interference. After all, we are confronted every day with such attacks and assaults against our democracy, attacks against hospitals, the media and in the social networks with Russian trolls who systematically spread this information. This cooperation is now tightening due to the change of government in Poland late last year. The new administration, led by Prime Minister Donald Tusk, has a long history of good relations with both France and Germany. That history is now paying off, with closer ties in the Weimar Triangle format. Kazimierz Łyszak, TVP World. So now, like you mentioned, Mr. Ambassador, we also saw here in the video, 40% um, of the European population in these three countries. So that will be quite some seats in these upcoming elections to the European Parliament. You also mentioned the Russian threat before these elections. So now, what is it that voters, well, should be aware of before they vote? <clears throat> I think they have to be, all of us, we have to be extremely aware that Russian propaganda is penetrating our countries deeply. We know it still at least 10 years, and we have the first proof. And it is not finally only propaganda, because Prime Minister spoken about saboteur, about, about the risk of sabotage inside our country. It is something of new. It is something who will, in any case, who will go to the destabilization of the internal situation of whole countries. And now, if you know, a couple of years ago, France, I am, remember I spoken to my friends, we spoken about the risk uh, in Europe, risk of populism, risk of Russian, uh, Russian influence on our politics. And uh, friends of mine said to me, you know, it is true, but uh, it, is not, uh, it is not working for France. We are not in the situation to feel danger. Now they understood that nobody in Europe is out of risk. It is my, the main, for me, message. Absolutely. Well, I mean, uh, we of course uh, uh, saw this, um, the statement from the Polish uh, Prime Minister, right, about mm -hmm. uh, these uh, people detained on charges yeah. of, of sabotage just yeah. recently. So it all seems to be uh, unfolding um, as we speak. But also another method of uh, hybrid warfare uh, is uh, this um, sort of unwanted migration, right, that is sort of being, um, being uh, well, this yeah. uh, migration crisis being artificially created, right, by yeah. some governments such as the uh, Belarusian one but you were also an ambassador to Italy right yeah. and Italy is also struggling with this um, with migration so I mean I was wondering if you could perhaps elaborate on that what how they're dealing with this I visited even Lampedusa during the the main period of wave of migration coming to to, to Italy uh, obviously, it is another thing because, because the migration coming from North Africa, from, from Libya to, to Sicily, to Italian island, it is a little bit different problem. But what is important for me is that for the first time we are feeling that the same risk, the, name, the same threat are concerning southern part of Europe and eastern part of Europe. Thank you, Mr. Putin. Thank you, Mr. Lukashenko. Because they shout to our friends that the, main, the same risk we are running with Italy, with Spain, with, uh, with Greece. And it is the, obviously, it is the risk who are created in artificial way because uh, Mr. Lukashenko is playing a role of, of, of passeur who is illegally helping poor people to cross illegally our border. But the problem is the same in the southern part of Europe and eastern part of Europe. For the first time, we are feeling no difference about uh, risk um, on, on European security. So now what about 
is, is Alexander Lukashenko acting on his own when it comes to this hybrid warfare that he is conducting, or is he simply fulfilling Putin's plan? He, he, he's, he's saying he's the closest ally of, of, of Putin. They are constituting the common state. I would say it is the cooperation between two, uh, two, two armies, two armed forces of Russia and Ukraine, even uh, Russia sending nuclear uh, warheads to, 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 to Belarus is showing how close they are. No doubt. Right, absolutely. Um, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it is a, a big problem. Also, with, uh, for instance, um, countries such as um, you know Tunisia or Lebanon recently received a grant from the uh, from uh, Ursula von der Leyen for a substantial amount to deal with the with the Syrian migrants, who of course then are trying to. to so it's it's all very complex, but also interlinked. It is extremely right? complex because, objectively speaking, demographic pressure. It is not something invented by Lukashenko. It is unfortunately something who will play a role in our, in our politics during the next decades. Because the, the, the demographic pressure, the, the connected to the climate change, will provoke the new waves of, of migration coming to Europe. But to use these poor people against our security, it is something who is criminal. It is a difference. Uh, so let me just uh, quickly ask you one last question. You've mentioned the mm -hmm. elections to the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. And um, I was wondering, do you expect any changes in policy post-election or perhaps, um, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, first of all, I think we will have uh, many surprises after this elections. When I am watching the, the provision for the, for the, uh, for the uh, elections, for instance in France or even in Italy, we will see the, the deep change inside European Parliament. We will probably have a new majority who will be finally majority who will decide what will be the composition of European Commission. For the moment, we have to see and we have to ask all, Europe, all Europeans to go for voting, to go, go voting for Europe, for European security, uh, because the vote for Europe, it is a vote against Russian propaganda. And we have to be the most numerous, like we was uh, October 15th. Very well said. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you very much for sharing your insight. Uh, Tomasz Orłowski, former Polish ambassador to France and Italy, thank you very much for speaking to us here on TVP World. Thank you.